My name's Hugh Stone. I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist and I work in the Surrey Community Forensic Service. I'm going to talk today about forensic psychiatry and in particular the forensic psychiatry services, how they work uh, and how they work with other agencies, particularly the criminal justice service agencies. Forensic psychiatry services are mainly based around secure hospitals in England. These hospitals are at three levels of security, high security, medium security and low security. Some patients may be admitted directly to any one of those levels and may be discharged from them, but others may move between them, either up increasing level of security or coming down the levels of security. It's important that the whole forensic pathway should include community forensic services as well. These should also include liaison diversion services and also mental health services into prisons because many people are identified as suffering from a mental illness in prison and are then transferred to a secure hospital for treatment. Forensic psychiatrists work with the criminal justice system agencies including the police, the probation and the prison service. They often work with what are described as multi-agency public protection arrangements or MAPA and this is a way in which different agencies come together to manage the most risky individuals in the community, some of whom will also have a mental disorder. Psychiatrists also give expert evidence to the courts and it's really important when they are working with the courts that psychiatrists should remember that they are doctors and should only work within their own area of expertise. If somebody is found guilty of an offence, if they suffer from a mental disorder, instead of going to prison, under English law they can be admitted to hospital under what's called a hospital order. They can then have treatment in hospital and be discharged to the community rather than going to prison. This can be done if it's felt this is the most appropriate outcome for them. Although people believe that mental illness is a risk factor for violence, there are other factors which are more significant and the evidence shows that it is the presence of a comorbid substance abuse disorder which is more significant in increasing somebody's risk of violence. It's therefore very important that in addition to treating their mental illness effectively, that people should also have their substance misuse disorder treated effectively as well in order to reduce their risk to other people. 